You told me you are no shapo katayakate libro koshke kere masanda yakata sukia. Hey, good morning to all of you, wherever you are, the sound of my voice. This is Patrick Quino. This is Faith Moment, bringing you an inspired word of God to bring you to that place of awareness. All right, to where we are in this dispensation in the current, in our current time. Current time. God bless you, man of God, apostle. I'm so proud of you. You have no idea. So proud of you. God bless you. Stay focused and do what you're doing. All right. God bless you. I want to talk um, to you today, ladies and gentlemen, about um, spirit, about a spirit. Um, Let's have a word of prayer and then we'll get into the word. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you for another day you have given unto us. This is the day that you have created and made it. We didn't do it, but you have given it to us as a gift. And we celebrate the gift and we receive it with all gladness and we thank you for it. Bless that which you have done and um, all that we are about to receive. Holy Spirit, now take control of this atmosphere nothing of me but all of you holy spirit revealing that which is of you and which others other spirits have uh, imitating you to your people so that we will be in the known and can be in the flow we thank you for all that you have done in jesus name amen and amen amen and amen beloved uh, wherever you are, my job is to bring you the word and um, yours is to receive or not receive. That is in the hands of the Holy Spirit. And so let me start my work. All right. And that is bringing you to that place of inspirational understanding of the word of God and to for you to practically know where you are. We've been talking in the past concerning the fact that we are not living in the old dispensation of the law uh, but for God so loved the world that um, he saw that man could not you know uh, fulfill his side of the covenant saw that it was important that he changed the game if you will so he sent his only begotten son Jesus <clears throat> to come and um, complete the assignment of of, uh, of man so that he will bridge okay reconciled man with him and so Jesus uh, came to announce that in Matthew 5 17 that he didn't come to abolish that of the old but he came to fulfill it well he did that and um, at the time of um, bringing it all together on the cross of Calvary um, <clears throat> Um, he completed it. He said, it is finished. Was buried on the third day. He rose from the dead as he said it, which they didn't believe at that time. And, uh, you know, showed himself to the disciples. Now, remember that all the things Jesus did, the disciples couldn't do it. Uh, why? Because the Holy Spirit has not come upon them. Why is they were with Jesus? Now, remember, Jesus received the Holy Spirit um, in the day or in the day of his baptism okay by John uh, he came from Galilee to be baptized in the river Jordan so we saw the evidence of the Holy Spirit coming upon him so Jesus then have to depart and then told the angel, uh, the disciples that they should wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit has come upon them because he is going to send the Holy Spirit he will send the Holy Spirit to come and then when the Holy Spirit comes, he will help them in every area of our lives. And so we see that the Holy Spirit is here now with us. We've seen that from then, from Jerusalem until now. And he said he will, be with, he will dwell with us and be in us forever. So therefore, oh, beloved, ever means forever and the Holy Spirit is here with us. Yesterday, I started um, one of the series of this series with you and I, I switch on for you to see that yes the Holy Spirit is here with us 
but there are other spirits also operating um, in like manner, if you will, of the Holy Spirit. So we are to be able to decipher which spirit um, is, is um, leading us. Remember that Jesus says that when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead you into all truth. Now, there are other spirits who are operating and um, looking just like that of the Holy Spirit. And beloved, if you are not discerning spiritually, you will not be able to know that. And you will realize that in the, in the beginning, it looks more like the Holy Spirit is at work. God is at work. But at the end, it's destruction. Because it is not all spirits that operating, looking like that of, of the Holy Spirit uh, is the Holy Spirit, if you understand. So uh, my job is to bring you to that place of awareness and understanding and uh, the fact that we need to test all spirits. This is why scripture tells us to test all spirits. Because yesterday I took you to uh, Revelation chapter 12. Uh, from the seventh verse down, we saw how Satan, okay, Satan, the old, <coughs> excuse me, the, uh, the old serpent in Genesis who became a dragon in Revelation was cast down from heaven and uh, came down with his own angels, those who followed him down here. Those fallen angels who have now become, okay, bad spirits and operating in the life of God's people. Uh, and try to get them to be destroyed. That is their assignment. And so if you are not discerning spiritually, and if you walk, not walking uh, in the spirit, you will not be able to know um, the difference between the work of the Holy Spirit, the original work of the Holy Spirit, and that of the imitational work of the Holy Spirit. All right? The original work of the Holy Spirit and the imitational work that looks because the imitation work of the Holy Spirit is from a different spirit. It's from Satan and his demons. And um, it, it's, it's, it looks just like that of the Holy Spirit. And so um, the, the, the scripture tells you and I that we have to be very careful that the last days which we are living in here, uh, even the elect of God can be swayed. Can be swayed. How could you be swayed? even as you are elect. Yes, because if you don't consistently, consistently seek him, consistently seek him, you will not, you will be misled. Let me just put it that way. If you don't consistently seek him, you will be misled. And so it's very important that um, you as a child of God, if you are, you should be aware of that. Are you listening to me? And this is where we are since of uh, since um, uh, yesterday, and so I want you to know that. So I'm continuing today about testing all spirits to know to know the spirit that you think is operating that you may be following, and that has to do with everything, everything. Whether the church you belong to, what kind of spirit is operating there? Um, the, 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 uh, the, the office, you know, the company where you are working, what kind of spirit is operating there? You know, the association, the, the, those fraternities and, uh, those groups and, um, um, you know, fellowships and men's fellowship or whatever, and organizations and, and all that, what kind of spirit is operating there? Families, families, what kind of spirit is operating there? Is this the Holy Spirit? Even in your home. What kind of fire spirit is operating there? Because we have every spirit. Listen, all the spirit, the Holy Spirit is at work and every spirit is also at work. Are you listening to me? Every spirit, every spirit is, is, is at work. They, they, they are not resting. Their, their assignment is to work. And so we need to find out which spirit uh, is operating where you are. Put yourself in any place that you find yourself. Whether it's a soccer field, soccer match, what kind of spirit is there? Whether it's a, it's a musical concert, what kind of spirit is there? Whether it's, um, you know, put yourself just, you know, in that grocery store, what kind of spirit is operating there? You must know 
Beloved, not to say that you cannot be anywhere anymore because you have to be so uh, careful. No, this is a warning sign not to scare you, but to bring you to the place of knowledge. In Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, the prophet Hosea brings a word from God saying that God says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Don't stop right there. Most of the time you quote some of the scriptures and you stop right Don't stop right there. Why is God saying that? If you go down there, you see, continue reading, you see that it's, it says because you have not accepted knowledge, you have uh, defiled knowledge, you have uh, disregard knowledge, and therefore he, God, has also disregarded you. That's what it is. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, and we stop. Don't stop. Continue to read. You see the, the reason why. And so the reason is, beloved, it is your responsibility for you to know for you to come to be in the know so you can be in the flow hallelujah you can flow with god amen praise god if not you'll be flowing with some spirit that looks like god but it's not are you listening to me and i'm going to prove one of them to you today for you to see how dangerous and uh, very sensitive world we are living in very sensitive world I'm telling you, the Spirit of God will reveal somebody so close to you who you may be admiring and loving and caring about who is operating not from the Spirit of, I mean, not from the Holy Spirit, but some other spirit, and you don't even know. I am telling you, it's very, very serious. Are you listening to me? So we are going to be seeing... Um, Different spirits here today. I won't bore you too too long because I know this type of studies and messages and preachings, it's most of you don't, that's not what you want to hear. I, I know what you want to hear, but that's not what you're going to get because it's not about what your itchy ears want to hear. It's about that say yes, the Lord, which I'm bringing to you. Now, whether you want to give me a thumbs up or you want to, you don't want to come on the line, it will be there. This is what I'm, I'm asked to do. The rest is yours. Are you listening to me? But me and my house, glory be to God. Oh, yes, we will be aware and not be ignorant of the devices of the devil lest he takes advantage over us. Glory be to God. Amen. So, because you see, I have realized that most people that God sent, a, a lot of people don't listen to them. Oh, yeah. The people selected that God sent. I mean, through our script, through our history, we, we hear them. We see them. People don't listen to them. Why? Because they, that is not what they want to hear. Because it's not what makes, you know, tickles their funny. It's not what makes them, you know, just kick their emotions and, 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 and stir up their emotions. Beloved, it's not about your emotions. It's not about your emotions. So you better get serious. It's not about getting a, the word that sounds good to you. If Satan appears like the angel of light and he can break and he can he can quote you scriptures and 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 um, you know wrongfully divide the word of truth to you and you are not spiritually discerning, you would not be able to know that that is not of God. Are you listening to me? This is very serious. The times we are living in, beloved, it's so serious. And the few people God uses to proclaim the truth, the word of truth to the people, they, they, they normally not heard. And so I, I have resigned, I mean, registered that in me. So mine is to just do the work of God and um, leave the, the rest for the Holy Spirit to deal with you concerning that. I cannot change you. I am not here to convince you. I am here by the help of the Holy Spirit to bring you the word of God and um, allow the Holy Spirit to do what he has to do um, in your life. 
Are you listening? So we are looking in the area because of the fact that the Holy Spirit is here. We need to test all other spirits because not every spirit is the Holy Spirit. Not every spirit is the Holy Spirit. Are you listening to me? All right, so we're going to see that. Go with me now to the book of um, John, First John, First John chapter 4. Get your Bibles. If you don't have your Bibles, please write them down, write the scriptures, and refer to them. Don't just listen and go. Please refer to them, all right? First John, all right? Go with me to First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. Let's read from verse 1. All right, First John chapter 4. Beloved, 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 you the beloved, I'm talking to you. The scripture is talking to you this morning. Do not believe every spirit. Ooh, did you hear that? Beloved, do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits. Test the spirits. Plural. In other words, it is not only the Holy Spirit operating in this dispensation of time. There are other spirits. Test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Many, not few, many false prophets have gone out into the world that you live in. Many prophets, okay? By this, you know the Spirit of God. Now, you are God is, is letting you know. He's not stopping right there at that test. Like um, Joyce was asking me, so how do you test the Spirit? How do you test the Spirit to know that this is of God and this is not of God? Well, this is it. Listen, Bible, it's not controversial as somebody would tell you to believe. And, there, and God gives you the answers to what he has said. I just gave you one in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Most of the time, you hear people quote the scripture. God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And they stop right there. No. There's a reason why God said that. If you continue to read, you will get the answer why he said that. God doesn't do things without a reason. He doesn't leave you in darkness. He, he is the light and he wants to bring he, he wants you to come out of the darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? All right. So this is why he says, test all spirits. Number one, I'm going to read it again. All right. If you're just looking at me of verse one of chapter four of first John. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits. Test the Spirit, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. That's why you need to test them all. Many false prophets. Verse 2. But this you will know that the Spirit of God, by this you will know the Spirit of God. You know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. By this you will know. And this is that every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. Donus, did you hear what I said? First John chapter 14. First John chapter 14. Can you put it up there for me, please? Okay, see, this is why I'm saying help us to get this, this um, technology, this um, um, instrument that we can, these things will be there for you. All right, so even if you came on the platform late, you can see where we are. Okay, so we are in John chapter, 1 John, 1 John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4. We're talking about the, the fact, the reason why you need to test all spirit. Okay, so everyone, verse 2, that confesses that that um, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Is of God. Now, and every verse three, 
And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist. The spirit that is not confessing that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, that is the Antichrist. So now you see that you, we are living in a times where a lot of people, and you see the scripture uses prophets. These are human beings. And so human beings, spirits, the Antichrist is operating in human beings, through human beings, flesh and blood. God operates through flesh and blood. And that is why you see that Jesus came in flesh and blood. And scripture is saying that every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that is not confessing that Jesus Christ has not come in the flesh is not of God. And that is the spirit of Antichrist. Are you listening to me? And so all these spirits are out there. So it's not only the Holy Spirit who is working. There are many spirits, the Bible says. We are in First John chapter 4, if you are just joining us, Phoebe. Are you listening? So now, this is where you have to pay attention to. Now, so... Um, why? Let's read verse 3 again. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You heard that spirit is coming and the spirit is already in the world. The spirit is already here. The Antichrist is already here operating through men and women okay through men and women that spirit is already here you are of god the bible says in verse 4 little children have uh, little children and uh, have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world they are of the world therefore they speak as of the world and uh, the world hears them these are the way the spirit speaks. So you can identify, okay, you can identify the spirit that is not of God and the spirit that is of God. In other words, if it's more of worldly things, the preaching is more of worldly things, the teaching of God's word is more of worldly things, then you know that that is not the spirit of God. Anything that has to do with, with more of the flesh, it's not of God. So there's some, there's, God is giving you and I a key for us to be able to decipher the spirit of God, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, and the spirit that is not of God. And they look, like I said, they, they, they may look so close. So if you don't have this knowledge, okay? This knowledge, this this knowledge that um, uh, you you know your God says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because you have the de de deserted knowledge. If you don't have this knowledge, how can you be able to differentiate the spirit of God and the spirit of of uh, the Antichrist? So let me show you something that will probably help you to see this. And when I say that the spirit, other spirits that are not of God are operating, they look and sound like the spirit of God, but it's not. Are you listening? They are not. No, they are not. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Go with me to the book of Acts now. Chapter 16. Chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Glory be to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Now, this has to do with Brother Paul and, um, <clears throat> and uh, his, you know, his quest of um, um, preaching the gospel and bringing the people to the place of awareness 
they have come to the place where <clears throat> Acts chapter 16, uh, look at verse 16. When you get a chance, beloved, because of time, okay, I just can read the whole thing to you. So start from chapter 1, okay, always when you get the scriptures, please start from um, chapter 1, I mean verse 1 of that chapter, and read yourself to the end. It will help you to understand, okay? Chapter 16 of Acts, chapter 16 of Acts, okay? Uh, let me take you from verse 11, okay? But 16, 16 verse is where I want to bring you to a place of attention. 16, chapter 16. Therefore, sailing from trails, we run a straight course to Samothrace. And the next day came to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is the foremost city of the past of the part of Macedonia, uh, a colony. <clears throat> and we were staying in that city for some days. Okay, this is Paul. And on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside, where prayer was customary made, and we sat down and spoke to the women who met there. Now, a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thyatira, who worshipped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she constrained us. Verse 16. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave possessed with a master's with a spirit of divination. Watch this now. Now, verse 16 of chapter 16 of Acts. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling this girl followed paul and us and cried out saying watch this now these men are the son are the servants of the most high god who proclaim to us the way of salvation and this the Bible says, verse 18, and this she did for many days. She did that for many days, following Paul. But Paul, watch this, but Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And the Spirit came out that very hour the spirit came out that very hour now what i'm trying to say to you is that now number one what the what this girl was saying was true it was a fact it was a fact that yes look at what she's saying these men are the servants of the most high god were they not yes they were who proclaimed to us the way of salvation? Were they not? Yes, they were. Are you getting are you getting the picture here? The, the girl was saying exactly who Paul and his associate were. But what kind of spirit was operating through her? That for that reason it got Paul annoyed. It got Paul annoyed. Why would Paul be annoyed of what was the fact or the truth of what he stood for and what he was doing? What got Paul annoyed? It was the spirit behind that accolades. It was a spirit behind that accolades. It was a spirit behind, you know, that which was making... You know, to let people know it was the evil spirit. 
It was the evil spirit. Beloved, if you don't know this word carefully, this is what you have to be very careful as to which spirit is operating in an environment that looks like God, but it's not. So scripture is telling you in John, 1 John chapter 4, he says, test all spirit. Beloved, we are living in some dangerous, dangerous, very slicky, dangerous world. I am serious. The more I live every day, the more I see. Slicky, dangerous world we live in. Paul got annoyed about this girl who is saying something that was true about Paul and his associate. And, he, and she kept, watch this now, she kept saying this behind them for days. Days! Days! Days, the Bible says. But the interesting thing here is that she possessed a spirit of divination divination that makes profit so watch that who brought she brought her masters much profit by fortune telling you go to a, a place and and i'm going to say this i mean it's it's really not too much of my business it's the work of the holy spirit but it's just something that i mean i need to interject this you're going to see a man of God and uh, quote unquote though. I'm not even putting it on general terms. And you need to pay money to see that person flee. Run. Consultation fees. So then it's a business. It's not the work of God, right? Consultation. That's it. I'm not going further. So this girl, you see how much money she makes? She brings much profit of money because of the spirit that was operating or that is operating in her. So she makes a lot of money. Am I telling you something? We are also going to see another guy who also was attracted Listen, the Holy Spirit attracts. The Holy Spirit attracts even demon spirit. So you need to know who the Holy Spirit is. I'm telling you. You got to know who the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit of God. Now, what's very interesting scenario that took place? Verse 19. But when her masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas, Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. You see, people, some of some 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 of us, we 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 are not making financial profit by preaching of God's word. <laughs> are you listening? We we don't get we don't get a lot of money by preaching God's word. Because, I, like I was saying to Joyce, I said, do you know that people who speak God's word according to God's assignment, not many people listen to them. Sometimes when I say, when I, I, I'm, I'm on this Facebook preaching or teaching, and I see, you know, oh, two people looking, one person looking, I laugh. <laughs> because it's so interesting. No, not many people will come on here to listen to the, to the word of truth. And this is. But you will see thousands of people following some junky messages and some junky stuff on, the, on, on Facebook. It's amazing. Because the Antichrist, the spirit of error, doesn't want you to hear the truth. It doesn't want you to hear the truth. You see the ignorance, and this is why it's so important, beloved, as a child of God, 
Don't be following blindly. Test all spirit. Test all spirit. Beloved, if you want to hear the truth, you want to hear the, the real truth, people who follow God, they, even from the beginning, from the beginning, they did not get it easy. Their livelihood was not as simply and as easy and as comfortably as you have been taught to perceive or have been taught to believe. I'm serious. The true word of God, it's, it's not about the worldly things. Do you hear what the scripture, the scripture is always talking against the things of the world. Not to say you don't have a car, to move you from, from point A to point B, because I mean the times we are living, yes. Not to say you can have a, a house, it's okay. But if the focal point is all about, you know, some demons following you, things that you are going through is as a result of some somebody chasing you, and it's as a result of therefore you have to do this so that you can do that and you can get that. Beloved, no. No. If after your salvation is nothing but a struggle, but you don't understand that you're, you are now in the hands of God and it is God who shows you, blesses you, and therefore you have to go out struggling and fighting and maneuvering and manipulating and all that to be rich and stay on top, then you have accepted Christ, but you are still operating in the flesh. I used to be there. You are, I'm telling you, listen, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir master myself. Yes, I did. Yes. So, beloved, we have to be very, very careful because, you see, by the end of the day, I, I, I'm going to leave everything, all that I'm to struggle to get. I'm going to leave it all down here. I'm going to leave it all down here. All that I'm struggling to get. The 100 cars, 50 houses, billions of dollars and all that I'm gonna leave it all here so why don't i concentrate of of things eternal everlasting forever than the things that are temporal think about these things so let me get to my point test all spirit so that you know what kind of spirit is operating around you and even in you. All right. Read the rest of the story concerning Paul and Silas. But I wanted to you to see that this spirit of, of this girl, that was operating on this girl, who was saying the right things uh, behind going behind Paul, almost like uh, um, 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 advertising Paul and Silas as to who they were. They were the servants of God. That's true. People were talking to people about their salvation. That's true. But that was not the right spirit. Now, where does, where, what does that then do? To be in an environment that looks like the spirit of God operating here, but it's not. It will lead you, okay? So you see, the trick is that, oh, it's a prophet. You see in you see in 1 John, watch this now. You see in 1 John, 1 John chapter 4, where the scripture says that test all spirit because many false prophets, not apostles, not teachers, not <laughs> they fall in the same category. You know, the other day I was just taking my time and go going through a list of contacts, some people that I know them to be prophets. 
Now I see that they have even changed their titles. No, <laughs> not prophets anymore. Some say they are apostles. Some say they are teachers. No, not prophets anymore. I say, oh, hey, you're running away now. I thought you said you're a prophet. Because you prophesied so many times and nothing came to pass. You prophesied so many, nothing came to pass. So now you are, you've run away from being prophet. Oh, I would just, I've just been tempted to mention a name. Just be prophet to apostle. Well, welcome to the apostleship. So that you can, I believe your heart is changed too. Anyway, so, <laughs> so he says, many prophets, many false prophets have gone out into the world. So you see that many eyes will, have, will go to this girl, okay? Many eyes will be drawn. You see the trick of the enemy? Many eyes. So in the, in the, in the shadow of the things of God, people are doing a lot of church business and all that in the name of God, but it's not. You see how tricky and how dangerous it is? Are you getting the revelation here? So many people's eyes would have gone on this girl because it's like, oh, she's a prophet. She's a prophetess. How did she know that Paul and Silas are, are the servants of God and, and she can see? And if she tells, if she can say this, which is true, wouldn't you follow her if she tells you something else which is not of God? Because she has already baited you with something that is of God. But the rest is not. Are you listening? Eh? <laughs> I'm an evangelist. <laughs> so, Dana, stop being a bad boy. Yeah, some are even saying they're evangelists now. Now they stop saying I'm a prophet. Mm -hmm. So you see this. Now, the Holy Spirit is very, very, very important in your life, beloved. This is why I'm saying that. Above all, you need, without the Holy Spirit. So now, we see that the Holy Spirit is here and other spirits are imitating the Holy Spirit. Now, let me show you another scripture. Read the rest of uh, this scripture, uh, chapter 16 of Acts. Acts 16, read the rest of it. It, it will bless you. It will, it will so bless you. All right, it will bless you. Now, if you go on there, you see how, you know, Paul and Silas were arrested because they have come to mess up you know, the, uh, the business of this uh, fortune teller spirit that was operating in that environment, in that area. Fortune tellers. Fortune tellers. People that are, I mean, fortune, today, today, what are, what are they? You, you, you call them prophets. Because it, it's about, let me go and see the prophet. Let me go and see the prophet to tell me, you know, what I need to hear. Let me go and see the prophet. Let me go and see the prophet. Yeah. They were fortune tellers. They, they, today they are prophets. Because you see, the scripture says, false prophets have gone into the world. Many. They went ahead of the fortune tellers. So now, their names are no longer fortune tellers, but they are prophets in the house, quote unquote, in the building where the, the children of God are. Mm -hmm. Watch yourself. So they put them in, in because the masters, the masters of this girl who, you know, she worked for them and all that. They were very, very ticked off that their business has been messed up. Why? Because Paul now, full of the Holy Spirit, have commanded that evil spirit out of this girl to leave her alone and just get it out. Now, if she's, the evil spirit is out of her, then there's no more business because she can, she's no, no longer going to be operating you know, in that uh, biz, uh, in that business um, of um, of uh, um, um, of a fortune teller, are you listening? And so they were they were they were they were ticked off, and they got them arrested. They got them arrested by the authorities. Uh, okay, if you look at it, I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing how these religious leaders would do. It's amazing. I remember many years ago, I, I won't mention this country, and I went to um, do good. I went to do good. I mean, went to do good, you know, bless the people of that nation with, you know, humanitarian uh, deeds. And um, 
to end the whole thing, you know. So let's thank God with um, a Thanksgiving um, gospel, you know, music rendezvous, if you will, and invited, you know, their, their, ch their church leaders and their people to come and be part of it. They didn't show up. Mm -hmm. Later on, uh, I was told by one who came and says, well, because uh, they, they, <laughs> they thought that, uh, you know, you, you have come, you know, from, from, uh, from abroad to want to show off. And, you know, and I said, you show off by doing, if by, if you have to, if by, by doing, you know, humanitarian deeds for people who have need is to show off, then I thank God that I show off, you know, to God, because why would I waste my time to do that? It's not about me getting the name. It's all the glory went to God. Because as a matter of fact, people, you know, donated their time and their finances, their own finances, to be part of it without anybody paying them. Without anybody paying them. And I'm not going to give you more details, but I'm telling you, this. now understand this. Of and what is going on even now, so you have an association, you know, uh, this this um, um, uh, religious association, and you have the, the 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 charismatic association, and then you have the orthodox association, and you have the the Sahindrin association, you have the Sadducees association, and the Pharisees association, the scribes association, and all that. And we are seeing we are seeing them now, and so here they send Paul and Silas to them. And they put them in prison. They commanded Paul and Silas to be beaten. To be beaten and put down in prison. They did that. They didn't see the Holy Spirit operating in them. The way that they were supposed to welcome him. Because they did not have the Holy Spirit operating in them. Are you listening? And therefore, they beat them up. Now, Read on all the way down. If you come to um, further down, verse 30 there from 25 going down, you see that the, um, the scripture says that um, uh, when they put them in prison uh, during the night, you know, they were even put in shackles and they were praising God for what God has done and still doing. That, um, you know, there was a shaking in the, in the prison there that the, the gates, the prison gates even opened. And all that, and uh, the God thought that Paul and Silas they have run away, and all that, and he took a you know his sword to want to kill himself because it's like, <laughs> like a, <laughs> like somebody, like somebody told me that uh, uh, a police officer, uh, you know, was collect. He's so used to collecting uh, bribes, money from people, you know, driving drivers, and uh, he didn't even know the. Um, the head of the police department in this particular place and you know he was doing the same thing so he uh, he took money from that that uh, in traffic that's what he they normally do and um, and uh, he didn't know that that was the head of the police department and so after he took the money and uh, the, <laughs> the the from this head of police department the, the police uh, officer said that uh, do you you have taken money do you know who's taking money to he says oh, who are you he says, that's, that's, I'm your boy. It's, oh, Lord. It's, it says, oh, I sack myself. <laughs> this is what happened. The Bible says that the, the, uh, the prison guard took a, a knife, you know, his own sword, to, to kill himself for what he thought. Because if, if he thought that the prisoners have run away, what, what, what's going to be, happen to him? What's going to happen to him? And Paul yelled from there. He saw him trying to do it. I said, hey, don't do that. Don't, we are still here. We have not run away. This is just for God to show you that he's in charge and he's working. And uh, the, 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 the side that I love so much is verse 31 of uh, chapter 16, Acts 16. So um, then watch this. Um, he said... Um, he asked Paul and Silas, it says, verse 28 says, But Paul called with a loud voice, saying, Do not, do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then uh, this God called for 
uh, then he called for a light, ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And, um, and then he brought them out and uh, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Verse 31 said, So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a word for somebody. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of people believe on their spiritual leaders. Not to say don't trust them. Or, you know, it says believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If they are working for God, then believe on the one they're working for. I'm a pastor too. So I'm telling you, believe on the God. Believe in your God. Believe on the, on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not telling you to, for you to believe on me. I am not Jesus. I am not God. Oh, we'll talk about something else, about this thing called about everybody is, is God. Another time. Okay. Now, so you see that the, the spirit of um, error is operating as the spirit of the Holy, as, uh, the Holy Spirit. But it's not. So you need to test all spirits. This is what we're talking about today. Test all spirits. Now, go with me now to Acts. Um, let's look at um, Acts, chapter, uh, Acts chapter 8. Let me show you another thing and then... I'll let you go for the day. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. <clears throat> Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Um, let's read from verse 1, okay? For I think we have some few more minutes. We'll read from verse 1. And then this will make more sense to you. Acts chapter 8. Now Saul was consenting his death. Um, <clears throat> at that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering, um, entering uh, every house and dragging of men and women, committing them to prison. That's what uh, Paul uh, was uh, Saul was doing verse 5 then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them and the multitude with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip hearing and seeing the miracles which he did for unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice come out of them uh, came out sorry came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Verse 8. And there was a great joy in that city. Glory be to God. Verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great. Claiming! That he was the one that they need to listen to the apostle. I mean, the prophet. He was a sorcerer. Who is a sorcerer? They can tell you things that, you know, uh, somebody says that dito, dito, dito. Even tell you the underwear, the color of your underwear. Oh, the prophet is great. Oh, the prophet is, oh, wow, he can tell everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Let's read. Verse 9. But there was a Simon, there was a certain, a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone, he was someone great, to whom they all gave attention from the least to the greatest, saying, This, watch this now, this man is the great power of God. God. <laughs> Did you hear that? How does a sorcerer be seen as a man, a great man of God? 
You better test all spirits. <laughs> Verse 11. And they heeded him because they listened to him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip as preached, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip. And he was amazed, watch this now, seeing the miracles and signs which Philip and they did. Now, verse 14, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Woo! They might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet, he, the Holy Spirit, had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands, you know, uh, Peter um, and John laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. They lay hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Now, when Simon saw that through this Simon now saw that through the laying of on of the of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given. Watch this now. He offered them money, saying, "Give me this power also, <laughs> that anyone on whom I lay." Hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Liar. <laughs> but Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, said to him, Your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with your money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter, for your heart is not right. In the sight of God. Let me punch here for a minute. Look at this. This spirit also. Operating through this guy called Simon. And. This guy has been practicing this thing for a long time. Made a lot of money. They saw him as. A man of God. The scripture said that. They saw him as. Somebody who has the power of God. But his power that he was operating to the attention of the people was not of God. Who is a sorcerer? Go and look for it, what they do to people. Beloved, test all spirits. People are using sorceries, black magic, fortune telling. Underworld spirits, all manner of spirits are operating. Remember, John, first John 4 says, Test all spirits. Remember, John, the pro, the, 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 the um, revelator, says in Revelations chapter 12, verse 7 down, yesterday we saw that, say, telling us that Satan. Is being cast down here with his spirits. Spirits of error. Beloved, if you're not careful, you would think that it will. It, see, the thing is, and, and we're going to go there tomorrow, that even the elect may be swayed because it is that close. It looks so, so close. This is where me personally, my concern is. So I need to make sure that the Holy Spirit is walking, working, living, dwelling, all that with me so, so, so much. That I will be able to decipher whatever church I go to, 
wherever I am, to be able to know what kind of spirit is operating there. This spirit of, of uh, fortune telling was saying the right thing about Paul and Silas. Oh, everybody, this is, these are the servants of God, most high God. They are, they are, they are, these are the ones who are telling us about our salvation. That is true. To draw attention to that spirit. You see how crafty it can be? When Paul and Silas have left that place, what do you think is going to be? Everybody's attention will go there because already that's the spirit operating there. So that's when Paul and Silas have been in this area, he's acknowledging them. First of all, the people over there are in darkness. They don't have this Holy Spirit to help them decipher, to know, to identify that this is not the Spirit of God. But they saw this Spirit operating in this woman as a Spirit of God. And in the time of this Simon also, they saw what was operating in Simon as a Spirit of God. But beloved, it's, it was not. It was not. And still not even today in some people. Because scripture says to you and I, in 1 John 4, that many false spirits in the office of the prophet. Interestingly, they didn't say apostle, the office of the apostle in the fivefold ministries. It mentioned the office of the prophet. Because that is the area where they tell you things. Let me tell you what you are going through now is as a result of somebody has, you know, so some demons have thrown a net on you and they've captured you and you are like a fish in the net. And when you hear these things, well, you know, if you, if you, we have to do something. We have to do some rituals. We have to do some directions. It's no longer rituals. Before it was rituals. Now it's directions. You see how we the upgrading? Yes. And beloved, I fell into that foolishness myself as a pastor. Yes, I did. I am telling you, I know, I know this is not the most popular message you want to hear, but it's a fact. But I'm to do my job because see, by the end of the day, I rely on God to take care of me. And I thank him for it. This morning, I got up and yesterday I was dealing with some issue and I mean, I was on the phone for so many, so more than an hour, just to, just for one simple thing. And I went through so many and then the phone would drop and I have to dial again and it would drop and it would dial again. God so good, eh? Every dial, every time I dial, it was recorded. And the person that I needed to talk to, <laughs> as I prayed this morning, I said, Holy Spirit, today is this day I need to do this. Help me. The Holy Spirit, oh, listen to me, beloved. I am telling you, I am witnessing to what I am talking to you about. I am, I am, I am giving you a testimony. I'm telling you. I said, Holy Spirit, let me not go through this because, and, 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 and I have to exercise my authority. I bind that spirit because I knew what was going on after a while. And um, interestingly, I was hungry too. I mean, physically hungry. I need to get something to eat. So I wanted to eat. And I said, so I said to myself, when, when the Holy Spirit prompted me, I bind that spirit. I said, I'm a, I'm a, call that num this number one more time even though people i think they have closed out after five so it was about 5 20 i'm going to do it one more time i did make that call and um the somebody this guy was a guy this time oh boy he was even worse in the beginning well i've been working here for all this while Yes, I'm, I, I know what to do. I, you know, I don't know about this extension that you, you are tell, asking me to call. Which extension is this? Da, da, da. I said, sir, there is this extension you need to call. I was talking to them several times and the phone keep dropping. 
Well, there's no extension like this. I have been in this place for all these hundred years. I know this. No, you need to go here. And I'm saying no, because see, now the Holy Spirit has prompted me, even the time that I know that they are probably closed, I made that call. And he was going on and on. Finally, after standing on my foot and not wavering, because I know who I, the spirit I was, I was dealing with, I said, then he said, okay, hold on a second. Let me just check something. I held on for about a minute and a half. He came back and said, oh, okay. Uh, I, I think I see what um, what you said. And I think they, they probably have something special they're doing for you. So, um, okay, well, now they have closed. I said, I think that is why the call kept dropping. So, well, now he is giving me, watch this now, the extension number which I didn't even have. He claimed he's worked in this place for all these years. See what the, 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 the spirit of error was trying to do? Deny me of what was rightfully mine. And so he told me now, now he comes, he says, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I didn't know that, um, you know, they, they do that here and they do that. And you are telling me you've been here all this while. You don't know that there's nothing like that. I, I, you, I am the one you have to deal with. Bible says that Paul got annoyed and cast out that devil out of that young girl. The Holy Spirit will let you know where you are and who you're dealing with and all that. This morning, I said, Holy Spirit, you need to help me with this. Guess what? The person who I called this morning, the person who picked up the phone, was the person I'm looking for all this while yesterday. And she apologized and said, you, do you know why? I, I, this morning, I told her, I said, use me as a case study to reach your supervisor and make it something that the company have to look out for and straighten the people up in that company and she said yes you are right but you see beloved the frustration that the enemy was trying to put me i said something earlier that people who followed god were not people who were you know seriously financially rich materially rich in going around from flamboyantly saying I have 20 cars and you know I, I'm preaching the word and I have five houses and 20 you know companies and all that this this were people who were you know passing through to where their true riches were so I'm letting you know that there's nothing wrong in having a house or a car but don't let your concentration go into the flesh of having all these worldly things that you are even going to leave them here when your trumpet is called, when your trumpet is blown. Think on these things. Most importantly, know that there's a lot of spirits, four spirits, that have gone into the world and that they are operating in the another spirit of God. If you don't know Jesus, whose, whose spirit, the Holy Spirit will help you to decipher what I'm talking about, then you need to receive the whole, you need to receive Jesus Christ first as your Lord and Savior and then be baptized in the Holy Ghost in the Holy Spirit for you to be able to walk and talk and live with him so if you're that prayer if you're that person let me pray for you right now if you're that person you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior scripture says today today when you hear his voice that you are convinced that indeed Jesus is Lord do not harden your heart do not harden your heart don't harden your heart. Let me pray for you. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you. I've heard your word. This word, I'm convinced that indeed 
you came to share your blood for the remission of my sin. I'm a sinner. So forgive me for not receiving you early, but have the opportunity to do it now. Now I believe and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Now Lord Jesus, baptize me. Let me pray for you right now. Just put, just lay your own hands on your head as the apostles did and the disciples did, even Peter. Lay your own hands because I'm not there where you are to lay my hands on you. So I'm going to stretch my hands even as you lay your hands on your head. And I'm going to believe God. We're standing on the word of God that if any two will touch and agree, whatever they ask of God will be done. So I'm going to pray right now. Lay your hands on your own head even as I stretch my hands towards yours to receive the Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity in this moment, in this hour, this minute, in the life of your son and your daughter, who have accepted you as their Lord and Savior. Jesus, you promised us the Holy Spirit and he's, he has come. He's here with us. For whosoever believe on him will not perish. But have everlasting life holy spirit now to those who wants, want you so much in their life receive them baptize them now may you be baptized in the holy spirit be baptized in the holy spirit be baptized in the holy spirit in the name of jesus be baptized in the holy spirit amen beloved that's it it's that simple. Now, if you have sincerely and activated your faith to receive the Holy Spirit, don't stop right there. Don't stop right there. Just continue to pray and um, ask the Holy Spirit to increase himself with you. Hey, daughter, don't worry. Today I'm late. You are late. Yeah, that's okay. But just uh, I'll just get the video okay just <clears throat> go on there and uh, we'll send it to you as well all right because I'm gonna you know what I'm I'll send it to you alone today I'm not sharing that thing I have come to the place where I'm not going to it's not to advertise okay it's not advertising this ministry I'm just doing God's work and that's it I'll send it to you I ain't sending it to nobody that's it if you find it on the Facebook glory be to God I will do that for you so Anyway, if you have done that, continue to pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to walk with you, talk to you. And uh, he will help you to, to uh, be able to decipher, all right, himself and the other spirits that are spirits of error. Okay? Take your time. Let me recap this for you, our, our scriptures for the day. Our theme, our title for today is Test All Spirits, 1 John 4. Test All Spirits. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is not the only spirit that is operating. Test All Spirits, 1 John 4. And then look at what I told you concerning other spirits operating in like manner of the Holy Spirit in... Um, in um, Acts chapter 16, all right? And also in Acts chapter 9. Now, um, in order for you to get that info, see, all this information would have been there. It would be there. But like I said, we need to get this system, this equipment that will help you to see all this, even if you had come on the platform late. And so, you know, we are raising funds, yes, we are raising funds to let you be part of it, let you sow into it so that you can also be, be blessed so that we can get this equipment, all right? If you want to sow $1,000, if you want to sow 500 if you want to sow 10000 a million dollars, glory be to God, whatever this Holy Spirit help touches your heart to do, go to the website, okay, of this ministry, Patrick Quino Ministries, www.patrickquinoministries.com. You will see a button say donate. 
click on it use your paypal if you can or your 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 credit card if you want to all right god bless you too danas all right be part of this so into it let us get this equipment that will help you to see everything all right we need to buy that buy this and giving you the opportunity to sow into it this is a good ground because i'm bringing you the unadulterated word the word that will practically help your practical daily life and living as a christian are you listening so help us to do that join us let's do it together so so if you want to use a cash app cash app the number for it is 914-572-9816 914-572-9816 to use your cash app to support all right you are not under any compulsion you are giving to support because of your love for god and the things of god not to you know feel that if you don't do it god will not bless you no don't ever think that god is not expecting you to give before he blesses you but it is a maturity thinking for you to know that the more you give the more you receive the more you you help the work of god sincerely identifying that the this work of god is of the holy spirit it's very important for you to know that too all right then you sow into it so may god bless you same time tomorrow i'll do my best as god gives me a message for you to bring it to you until then please go to the website again www.patrickquenoministries.com you see the buttons there and um you'll be able to uh, make your contribution or a donation. He said, donate, do it. If you want to use a cash app again, it's 914, the number to do that, use it 914-572-9816. Until same time tomorrow, I want you to know you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all thy getting, get understanding.